But you all remember that 70 is the year that the temple is destroyed by the Romans, generating, as I understand it, and please correct me if I get this wrong, but as a Christian reads the story, at that moment, all Jews, including in this, every bit as much as uh, anyone else, the Jewish followers of Jesus, all Jews are thrown into what we might call a religious identity crisis. What is it <laughs> to be extreme. a Jew without the temple? Yeah, it's more extreme Right? Than that. What yeah. is it to be a Jew without the temple? And as I understand it, yeah. uh, the two large answers, since one whole, this, in a way, the central institution of the people of Israel is eliminated, the priestly establishment, because they uh, disappeared with the temple itself. Um, so the Pharisees ultimately uh, what we call rabbinic Judaism answers to be a Jew without the temple is, as you put it so wonderfully, is uh, to live through the transition of a religion of space into a religion of time. Right. That is to say, to be a Jew without the temple, am I wrong? Is to be a Jew who's observing Sabbath. Right. And the Sabbath means something different without, as, as when it becomes the temple in time, right. as the rabbis call it. I first saw that in Heschel. Right. Uh, so the Sabbath is the temple in time. And, and the followers of Jesus are answering to be a Jew without the temple is to be in the presence of the new temple who is Jesus. Yeah. And it's in that sense that I recognize Jesus. Yeah. So one answer is Sabbath-centered. Yeah. Another answer is Jesus-centered. Jesus. Am I this is very, on the same this, page? This is quite brilliant. What Jim is doing, there's a chapter in my book, a part of a chapter in my book in which I interpret, read very closely the first few chapters of Mark, in which Mark... Um, uh, having been baptized by John in the wilderness, barrels into... Uh, Jesus. Sorry, uh, Jesus. Uh, Mark portrays Mark, uh, uh, Jesus yes. as doing right. that. Right, thank you. Uh, Ka I never know how to pronounce that. I always want to say Capernaum. Capernaum uh, and begins preaching in a synagogue. And we don't entirely know what he says. All we know is that he speaks with authority. That is to say, he violates the sort of rhetorical rules of conversation or of, 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 of exposition. Uh, which require that you cite ancient texts and then uh, elaborate on them. And he proceeds to heal somebody, and the Pharisees are alarmed and upset. And this sort of sets in motion. A few other things happen. He heals some more. And this all sets in motion the plot to destroy him. And I argue that this, the, w the reason the Sabbath plays such a key role is because when Jesus arrives, sort of the notion of time itself changes. It speeds up. We move into end time. And Jesus needs to convey this change in the order of time to the uh, congregation. And what better way to do that than to violate the Sabbath? And uh, also, you know, if you are in the end time, then these sort of... Um, these slow spots in time or these boundaries of time become less important because you know, you're in the realm of emergency and emergency supersedes uh, temporal rules. And what you're doing is you're saying this was in fact, uh, Mark was writing exactly at the moment of the destruction of the temple and it was in fact an end time. It was in fact a state of emergency and he, he is bringing in Jesus as you know, the redemptive figure to sort of take Jews out of the morass into which they'd fallen. And uh, this is just, it's very elegant. It's very beautiful. 